I'm a chunky monkey as much as the next guy. And by golly, I love the good stuff. The junk food. Hamburgers. Oh! Awesome. Pizza. Tacos. Especially the pink ones. <laughs> Tater chips. You name it. And as much as I love scarfing down these wonderful delights, I equally love pumping my iron at the gym. It's actually getting to the gym that's the problem for me. <laughs> Not only that, I get very impatient and tend to want to see same day results. But even I know loving yourself takes time. And with that being said, I wouldn't risk my life for the consequences of being impatient, like these fake bodybuilders. It's actually quite sad to see some of these people go overboard and even more embarrassing, that they believe they actually look good when in reality they are actually causing more harm than good to their bodies. I mean, you can do whatever you want with your bodies. It's not my choice. But goddamn. <laughs> the fact these bodybuilders look like helium-filled balloons ready to pop the is, this? is what caught my attention and concern as well. Concern that we're living in a world of delusion. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the scotch. Grab a f dumbbell and welcome to the wonderful but dangerous world a fake bodybuilding. Before we even begin to explore some of these fake bodies, we need to investigate what causes these massive balloons in the first place. Yes, I know. Many of these bodybuilders are on some sort of juice, and while I'm no expert in building my fat-ass body, the people I'll be focusing on seem to be using a substance called synthol. So what is this devil of a beast? The National Library of Medicine stated in a 2020 study that synthol oil is a material similar to silicone, considered a doping substance, but unlike others, it does not bring any real benefit to the body or increase athletic performance. It is made up of 85% oil, 7.5% lidocaine, lidocaine, and 7.5% alcohol. Its function is to inflate the muscles by being injected directly into the site of desired enhancement. The human body is unable to assimilate synthol oil, and therefore, it remains in the muscles for a long time, eventually causing swelling. Injecting this cosmetic oil can cause long-term effects as a whole. Ulcerations can occur, disfigurements, pulmonary embolism, Pulmonary embolism occurs when a small blood clot, or embolus, breaks off from a larger clot, or thrombus, and travels to the lung where it can cause a potentially life-threatening blockage. Which could even result in something much worse. Death. Now, it's not only synthol that creates this rapid growth of muscle tissue, but some of these bodybuilders even go as far as to implant every muscle in their body. And when I say every muscle, I mean every fucking muscle. So now that we got this brief synthol lesson out of the way, and the fact that some of these dudes get actual plastic surgery, let's take a look at the effects of these bullshit shenanigans. Starting off with Justin Jedlica, the fake bodybuilder that is literally dubbed the human Ken doll. I mean, Justin, can you tell us how many implants you have in that gorgeous body? I think I have 25 implants now. Anterior, yes. posterior, okay. lateral delt. Biceps. I have bicep, tricep. Tear is minor major as a single piece. Two in the quad, and then two down That's below. That's 21. Oh, about oh, my chest. <laughs> I haven't been in the gym in like 12 years. And on his Instagram page where he calls himself a reality TV personality, along with an aesthetics consultant, and custom implant designer, Justin seems to be staying quite busy, which obviously he might not have time to go to the gym. While Justin doesn't seem to fully understand the dangers of plastic surgery, or could care less about his previous mishaps, like a misplaced implant on his calf and even leakage on his quad that led to seroma, he certainly cares less about being a healthy bloke and cares more about promoting his silicone-based lifestyle to a dividing audience. That's just creepy and weird. It's like making a prettier Frankenstein monster. Oh my god, that's gonna look so good with manly brows. I'm jealous. I certainly am not jealous. To some, even questioning the plastic surgeon's judgment. This is irresponsible practice. The guy obviously has mental health issues with his appearance. Now, to keep it short with Justin, it seems that he might never learn from his mistakes and genuinely thinks he looks good, which is something our next bodybuilder, Kirill Tereshin, 
failed to learn as well. Bazooka Hands, Rookie Bazooki, or some who even dub him the Russian Popeye, is a man by the name of Kirill Tereshin, but let me tell you, he wasn't always like this before. Before he began his doping journey, Kirill served his country and actually had a decent physique, with people on his Instagram even commending his old gains. Bruh, this is more better. With another stating, should have stayed like this. His audience was referring to something that would eventually land Kirill in life-threatening situations. After leaving the Russian army in 2017, Kirill started his synthol journey, where he began injecting the oil directly into his muscles, mainly his biceps, with the results making it look like he stuck balloons under his shirt. And of course, this got him some attention. With the help from social media, he'd land on a couple of Russian television shows and even gained himself hundreds of thousands of followers on his Instagram page. He'd even start collaborating with fellow real-life Incredible Hulks. But that's not to say that his fame didn't come with a dangerous price. Kirill started to feel like he may have had a problem developing in his brain after injecting copious amounts of synthol. Not only did it cause potential nerve dysfunction, tissue damage, cyst formations in his muscles, and even cardiovascular issues, the Russian Popeye would further risk his life in a cage match where one of his arms burst open. <laughs> It's safe to say that Kirill doesn't care too much about any of the doctor's warnings, as it seems he's moved on to facial injections. Could it be Botox, could it be Synthol, I have no fucking idea. His recent videos show a disfigured Kirill. <laughs> with one concern from the audience. You definitely have a fuck problem. This is not for you. I predict you won't live much longer doing this. Now, I'm not one to judge, and I'm also not a doctor of any kind, but it seems if Kirill sticks to his dangerous habits, an awful ending could be predicted. Remember the guy that was posing with Kirill in the previous chapter? The man I'm referring to is Romario dos Santos Alves of Caldas Novas, Brazil. While this behemoth of a man definitely molded himself into the real-life Incredible Hulk, his dangerous practices almost caused him the amputation of both of his arms, just like Kirill's story. In his earlier days, Romario looked fairly decent, had a physique many would love to have, including myself, and worked as a bodyguard with his Instagram audience even noticing how drastic the change would become. Just like Ruki Bazuki's Popeye arms, Romario's arms began to look like inflated balloons and even had shoulder muscles on top of shoulder muscles I didn't even know existed. His goal was literally to look like the Incredible Hulk. And by 2015, at the age of 25, he'd start to feel the repercussions of using synthol. Romario would state to the Daily Mail that he saw some really big guys in the gym with huge arms and he started to make friends with them. These friends would introduce him to the world of doping and after seeing some results, Romario's passion for bodybuilding turned into addiction. The former bodyguard said using the synthetic filler synthol cost him his sanity and tried to end his life when his wife was six months pregnant. Romario would state, I remember the doctor told me they would need to amputate both arms. They said everything in there, all my muscles, were rock. His muscles were literally turning into stone, with the doctors able to remove some of the synthol buildup, ultimately not having to amputate his arms. Even the oil's toxins almost caused the kidney failure. Luckily, it seems that Romario has changed his ways for the better. He became clean and still aspires to be a bodybuilder, the natural way. He also became a barber with a barbershop called Hulk Brazil. And devotes his time to getting gains for the Lord. Here's a man who took it to the next level by literally having one of his arms explode. And this guy is known as Greg Valentino. He began his workout journey in the early 70s and trained naturally for 23 years. Until he was met with the dangerous world of synthol and steroids. His biceps grew from a natural 21 inches to a staggering 28 inches at the height of his fraudulent gains. According to the US Sun, 
he injected synthol stacked with equipoise, about 3,000 milligrams a week, into his biceps. I don't know if it's equipoise or equipis. Equipis sounds better. <laughs> so I'm going to say it like that. Equipoise. Equipis is used by bodybuilders to ramp up endurance, muscle mass, and the production of red blood cells in the body. The bigger you get, you know, and the cockier you get, and, you know, you start thinking you're Teflon, and, you know, that's what happens. His impressive body landed him a spot in the ESPN magazine, and even came out in a book titled Bizarre Big Book of Freaks, Geeks, and Amazing People, just like me. I didn't come out in the book, I'm saying I'm amazing. <laughs> While Valentino was enjoying fame in the bodybuilding community, the concoction of juices developed an abscess in his arm that eventually punctured, causing a severe infection. The infection caused his bicep to blow up with pus and had blood pouring out of his arms for hours. He was rushed to the hospital and his bicep had to be cut open to drain the synthol and the infection. After that experience, his use of synthol and steroids practically diminished. And I hate that synthol shit. Oh, you have no idea. You have no f clue about that, holy Christ. Greg nowadays seems to be doing just fine. Conducts several interviews where he discusses his past life, gives workout advice, and honestly, just seems like a pretty funny guy. The last person on this list went by the name of Valdir Segato who was also dubbed the Brazilian He-Man and Incredible Hulk. Now, Valdir had a rough youth to begin with and was also known as the Skinny Dog, stating, I got involved with drugs and I started losing weight because you don't eat, you lead a wrong life. He eventually quit drugs, joined the gym, and wanted more extreme effects that he could achieve from exercise alone. And after consistently hitting up the gym, something I don't do, Valdir was introduced to the world of Synthol by another gym member, he soon became hooked with synthol, a mixture of oils and even painkillers, and literally injected the hell out of his upper body. He had tits the size of Mount St. Helens, <laughs> biceps and triceps that looked like helium-filled balloons, and often skipped leg day. Doctors had even warned Valdir of the possible cerebral stroke and or infectious complications. Just like most of the people in this video, Valdir ignored the doctor's warnings and continued to synthetically build up his body. He'd later be known on the streets of Brazil as the monster, which he actually enjoyed and continued injecting his arms that eventually caused a synthol buildup that quite possibly needed amputation. Ignoring his medical results, Valdir felt shortness of breath on his 55th birthday. And according to his landlord, it was around 6 a.m. more or less. He came crawling through the back house and came to the front. Then he knocked on my mother's window, knocked, knocked. Then she woke up and he said, help me. Help me because I'm dying. Segato was taken to a medical facility, but he fell at reception, appearing to have had a heart attack. And that would be the story of Valdir Segato. If you stuck around till the end of this video, you get two cookies from me. So what do I think? I think this has to do with three things. Mental instability, impatience, and probably the main reason, 15 minutes of fame. When I see a man like Kirill going as far as injecting his face with synthol, or Botox or both, I see a man who's going through a mental decline, whereas people like Justin Jedlica seem to be doing it to gain attention. To be honest, all reasons are actually quite sad. The fact these guys are even getting attention shows you how fucked up the algorithm is. It also seems like most of the attention these bodybuilders receive is nothing but negative. And despite being an addictive drug, the fact most of these bodybuilders ignored severe health warnings and let their stubbornness get in the way reveals the type of mental decline they are facing.